When someone comments a multi-billion dollar idea on one of my videos, there's a high probability I'm going to be making it because I need that kind of money to be able to acquire VS Code someday. So I went to Twitter and asked the people what they wanted to see, and there were a lot of good answers, like a lot of them. But there was one particular answer that really spoke to me, that really inspired me, and I knew this needed to be included. And the more I thought about it, I came to the realization this shouldn't be a part of OnlyFans for programmers or only codes. It really should be its own thing. So I did exactly that. I put only codes on the shelf and I built a competitive MMO RPG for programmers, except without any MMO RPG elements. And you can give this a try if you go to stripcode.dev. When you come here for the first time and press start playing, it's gonna ask you to log in with GitHub, but then after that you're gonna be good to go and you're gonna be dropped straight into ranked gameplay. So make sure you're prepared because as you're gonna see, you wanna go through this as fast as humanly possible. Now, I kind of already started a round, if you will, or a thingy, so this entire thing is shown, but let me show you what it is if you drop into this for the first time. So I'm just gonna switch languages. Let's pick something spicy. Uh, okay, let's do Objective-C. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna show you like a small code block, and this is the name of the file. And then as you see, it's going to slowly reveal itself or strip itself, um, and you're gonna see more and more of the code snippet. And the idea is, before this runs out, well, if you wanna earn the most points, um, as you can see, there's like a points here, and you lose points every time it shows more. And by the way, the timer is five seconds. So every five seconds, it's going to reveal uh, more code. And the idea is I'm trying to guess where this code came from. Did it come from this GitHub repo? This one, this one, this one, or this one? And there's five choices down here. So yeah, these are all GitHub repos. And these are all Objective-C GitHub repos. So did this file, um, what is it called? OEDB Smart Collection, did it come from this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one? I honestly have no idea. Let's go, I don't think it's this, UI kit. I'm gonna go with the UI kit. Ooh, retro was kind of my first choice, but then I was like, nah. All right, so yeah, I got it wrong, and that says minus 30 points, and that's how it works. So I lost points because I got it wrong. Um, but okay, let's switch to our language so we have a better chance. Let's go to TypeScript for a second. All right, use delete many. Where would this maybe come from? I don't think it's going to be, no, it actually could be in React Admin. I could see it being there. I feel like it's in React Admin. There we go. So I got that one right. And okay, this is actually just a really small code snippet. But I got it right, and I got 10 points. And next question. So it starts at 100 points, and it'll slowly tick down. If you switch to the all languages, uh, it gives you more points for doing that, because I reward you polyglots. Um, yeah, so I have to do this as fast as possible. As you can see, I'm already losing points. Where's Sanitize coming from? Uh, Slate probably sanitizes. Docusaurus might. Ooh, yep, and I got it wrong. Uh, by the way, the idea behind minus 30 points is I wanted to make sure you couldn't randomly guess and have a positive score. So that's why you have minus 30 if you miss them. Uh, but there you go, that is the game. Okay, so a few minor notes that may be helpful to know, starting with the repository cards down here, or the answers. So there's the name of the repository, then underneath they also include the description for the repo, because I figured not everyone would know all these repos that I have included, though you should recognize a good portion of them, at least if you pick the language you're familiar with, because how I selected these is I took the top 1,000 repositories based on the number of stars, and I basically just grabbed the data from that based on the GitHub API. Now also, if you scroll up to the very top, there is some info that's good to know. So first off is the number of points you've accumulated. In my case, I'm negative because I keep getting them wrong. Here's your rank. This is global across all users across the entire world. And then active users, just the number of people that are currently using the site. I was gonna show the leaderboard next, but I forgot to actually clear out the database. So we're gonna do that real quick because right now there's a couple users in there that are just dummy users. So where the username is not equal to Ben Awad. Goodbye, all eight of you. All right, now I can just click on the leaderboard and bam, there I am, rank zero, let's go, I'm destroying. Now the top 50 players will show up here, so if you're good, you'll be here. If you're not, uh, you won't show up here, but you can see your rank just over here and the number of points you have, and that's how you can know how far away you are from the top 50. Now if your points don't line up, 
you know, like here, it's a little bit different than it shows over here. Well, actually, let me just show you that case. Bam, got it wrong. Next question. I'm at negative one, one, two, and I go over to leaderboard. It's different. What the heck is going on? The reason for this is I have a cash control of 10 seconds on. So if this happens to you, just wait 10 seconds and then refresh the page and then bam, there you go. Points are going to be reflected. They're going to be the same. Now, probably the most interesting part about strip code is how it was created. I use this as a project to learn Elixir. This is my first ever Elixir project and I use the Phoenix framework to create it. And believe it or not, I didn't use a single JavaScript framework and I wrote maybe one line of JavaScript this entire project. And I use this thing called Phoenix Live View to make everything interactive. So how this works is I create a template, which you're looking at right now. And all this is is some HTML and then mixed in are some tags that look like this. And these are just dynamic or I think of it as kind of like reactive variables. And these are just values that change over time. So the points, they start at 100, and then over time, I need to change the value, so they're in these at sign things. And then also you can see I got a little bit of Tailwind CSS in there to make everything look pretty. And then you write some Elixir code to pass data to that template. So here's my mount function right here. You'll notice Phoenix Live View kind of has some React-esque vibes going on with it. And uh, inside of here, my fetch initial data is kind of my main function here. So I got some SQL queries going on. You'll notice they look a little bit funky, right? That's just how Elixir is. And then at the very bottom here, uh, these are all the variables that I'm passing to my template. For the initial load of this page, it uses that template, it fetches some data from the SQL database and just pipes that data in, right? And that HTML is displayed, nothing fancy going on here. But to actually make this page interactive, for me to be able to like switch languages to Swift and me not to have to write JavaScript, what happens is it will actually mount a WebSocket and it will also create a process on the server side. So for every user that actually comes to this website, a new process on the server is created and a WebSocket is talking to that process. And so whenever I go from here to TypeScript, it is sending a message through WebSockets. And whenever I click this, a WebSocket event happens. And when I click this, another WebSocket event happens. And for this page to load, that's another WebSocket event. Because like when I click this, and I go to the next one. Oh, nice, I got it right. Uh, that is not a full page reload either. It's just swapping out the HTML. And the other thing is they got some fancy things going on where it diffs the HTML, so it's only sending, or not even diffs the HTML. It diffs the variables that you're that are being changed, and only the variables that have changed are sent over the wire. So there's some fancy stuff going on. It's pretty nice. So in my template, when someone presses the next question button, I add this PHX click, and I set it to next question event. This event gets sent to the server side when this button gets clicked. And on the server side, I just have these event listeners. And I'm listening for the next question. And then I basically have a function that gets called and it just tells Phoenix what I want the data to change to. For this particular project, I thought this was a pretty good style of doing things because I kind of wanted all the logic to be server side anyway and for it to be real time. That way we could just like avoid cheating and stuff. Like I only want to show you a snippet of the code and I want to show you all of it, but then I want to load quickly and continue loading over and over every five seconds. And so that fit nicely with the Phoenix Live View kind of style of doing things. What I'm interested to see is how well this scales because everyone says how well Elixir scales. But I'm using Phoenix Live View and it's going to create a process for every single user that comes to the site. So if a thousand of you are actively playing the game, and by actively I just mean like you're on this page right here, because I'm not actually using Live View. Oh, did I wreck it? Did you guys see it load for a second there? What's going on? My DB slow? Anyway, these two pages are not Live Views, but this one is. So this is where the process is actually created. Dude, why is it being slow? Oh, I'll tell you why it's being slow. This is just a massive HTML file. Okay, that makes sense. Anyway, this is the actual page, but I got this fancy dashboard that they let me monitor things. And supposedly the processes are really lightweight, so maybe it won't be a problem at all. And actually, I think we're gonna be just fine would be my guess. But uh, it's on a $10 VPS on Vulture, so I'm just going to be looking at this and see how well we hold up. Overall, I had a great time with Elixir and I really enjoyed the Phoenix framework. I like how you just like spin up these like little gen server, these little processes uh, to do things and to watch things. Like this one right here, I just kept track of all the different live view processes. 
I think I have it down here somewhere. Yeah. So I'm just monitoring every single time one gets spun up. And this is how I count the number of active users that are currently on the site. So stuff like this I thought was really cool and I enjoyed doing stuff like that. Uh, the one thing that really took me a while to get used to was Ecto and doing queries with that and how that entire thing works because there's a few different ways you can write stuff. But after I got the hang of that, I actually really liked the syntax and I enjoyed that. But personally, I will not be rushing back to Elixir. At some point, I'll probably come back to it because I did enjoy it, but there is one thing that does irk me, and I'll show you exactly what it is. All right, I want you to look me straight in the face and tell me this field exists because that's what Elixir just did to me, and I just can't do it. I'm just a spoiled brat at this point. I need statically typed languages that autocomplete everywhere and tell me every single mistake that I make. And uh, it is what it is.